Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service of morning prayer on this third Sunday after the Epiphany. I'm so glad that you joined us here this morning for worship. And our service begins on page 76 of the Book of Common Prayer. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The confession is found on page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. And the Benite is found on page 82. <clears throat> Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. <clears throat> The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 62. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. And God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those are of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion, and robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, 
and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. First reading is from Jonah chapter 3. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, even those who have wives be as though they have none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the pre present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebdi, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebdi in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you once again for joining us on this glorious Lord's Day. And I hope you're well. And I'm, I want to begin this morning the message time with a question for you. Has there been a time in your life or times in your life when you believe God wanted you to do something and then you didn't do it? And you didn't do it, you didn't follow through because for whatever reason, how oh, you simply didn't want to. Now, if that describes you, then you've got something in common with the Old Testament prophet Jonah. From our Old Testament lesson today that Patsy read, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I will tell you. Now, 
I think for most of us, when we think we've heard God speak to us or lead us in a particular direction, we may not always hear God so clearly. And we sometimes wonder, was that really God speaking to me and leading me? But here, Jonah hears God speak to him clearly and directly. Jonah receives from the Lord a verbal and a very specific divine assignment. So how many of you know that our God is a God of second chances? Isn't that good news? I know it's been good news in my life. And it was certainly good news for Jonah as well. You see, God called Jonah to go to Nineveh the first time. And what did he do? Uh, for those of you who don't know the story well, he went in the opposite direction. He fled to a place called Tarshish. However, there was no reason that Jonah had to go to Tarshish other than the fact that he wanted to get as far away as possible from this place to which God had called him. So why was that? Well, because God was calling Jonah to preach repentance to this people who were enemies of Israel. In fact, the Israelites despised them. And the last thing Jonah wants is for them to actually repent of their sin and be spared of judgment. No, he wants them to continue in their evil ways and for God to judge them. He doesn't want mercy. He wants justice, and he wants justice now. You see, he doesn't want to give the Ninevites an opportunity to turn around. So Jonah heads in the other direction, away from Nineveh. Well, he's hoping God will just decide to call someone else to take on this task of preaching repentance to the despised Ninevites. So the reality is, I guess that's exactly what God could have done. I suspect there may have been quite a few others who were capable of carrying out this call to preach to the Ninevites and to do what Jonah was called to do. And perhaps they'd be much more willing but you see, God doesn't do that. On his way to Tarshish as a stowaway on this ship, things don't go as planned. Jonah is thrown overboard and ends up in the belly of a great fish. He survives the ordeal and he's given a second chance by God. Jonah is given a second chance to complete this preaching mission to Nineveh. And I guess you can say Jonah responds a bit differently the second time around. How does he respond? Well, without hesitation. Now, why do you think that is? <laughs> not only does Jonah not want to have happen what happened the first time, he likely thinks things may not go quite as well the second time. After all, his life was spared the first time around. God had mercy on him, even though this is not what Jonah deserved. He may have thought that God might not be so patient if he tried that trick the second time. And so Jonah sets out and goes to Nineveh. It says, according to the word of the Lord. It says, now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. And many times in the Bible, we really just get this thumbnail sketch of what was said or what went on. We don't get uh, the entire uh, text of what was said. We don't get all the details. Why? Well, because the author only uses the words that he needs to use to communicate the story and make the theological points that he wants to make. And so, in other words, when Jonah 
goes on this preaching mission to Nineveh, he likely says more than what we see indicated here in this text of Scripture. Now, what does it say? Jonah said to the people on the preaching mission, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Again, I would likely say that Jonah said a bit more than that. After all, preachers are known to be a bit long-winded from time to time. However, the point the author is making with the brevity of these words is that Jonah's message to the people of Nineveh was clear, it was direct, it was short, and it was simple. On their part, on the people's part, their response was quick. It simply says, and the people of Nineveh believed God. And it says they put on sackcloth, which was a sign, an outward sign of repentance. In John chapter 15, beginning at verse 4, Jesus says this, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. From apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. And so here's the principle when we're listening for God's voice, when we're connected to him, when we're desiring to follow his will and and do what he wants us to do, we're abiding in Christ. And I believe that's when God blesses us the most because we're tied in with him and what he's doing. Now, uh, I can tell you that there have been times in my life and in my ministry that I've launched out on some endeavor that was my will and not necessarily God's will. And frankly, there have been a few significant times that I could think of that I had little interest in really hearing from God because I knew for certain what I wanted to do. So why would God not put his stamp of approval on my plans, I thought. You see, at times I've I've thought that I've known better than the Lord and I've run ahead of him. I haven't spent time patiently listening for God's voice. I haven't spent enough time committed to prayer. And as a result, on occasion, like Jonah, I've made a mess of things. Now, fortunately, God has redeemed those messes and given me plenty of second chances, and I think I've learned a lot in the process, perhaps a little bit like Jonah. So one answer to why the people responded so quickly and so positively to Jonah's message is because Jonah eventually was abiding in the Lord. He was eventually obedient to do what God asked him to do even though up to the very end, he didn't want to do it, which is really so ironic. A prophet preaching repentance that really doesn't want the people that he's preaching to to do what he says. In verse 10, it says, when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them. And he did not do it. Now, please understand here, we're not talking about wholesale conversion. The author is not saying that the people of Nineveh forsook their God to worship the God Yahweh. It doesn't say they converted to the faith of Israel. It just says they believed God in this instance and repented from whatever they needed to repent of. It really doesn't tell us in the text what their sin was, what they needed to repent of. So once the people repented, how did Jonah react? 
Again, the truth is most preachers would be delighted with the kind of response that Jonah gets from the people of Nineveh. Jonah is finally faithful to go and preach the message that God wants him to preach. The people respond with an attitude of repentance. It all seems very good and very natural because God has his hand in it and he's blessing it. Jonah, in this instance, is, well, at least in part, abiding in the Lord. And so what is Jonah's reaction to the people's response? Chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. <laughs> wow. And so Jonah has just witnessed this incredible, really a miracle, this, this fruit from his ministry. And as a result, he's totally depressed and dejected and he's angry. He's angry with God. Yeah, most preachers, I think, would be so delighted with this kind of response. Again, he's angry because unlike God, he desires judgment rather than mercy. And so do you ever catch yourself asking God for his justice or judgment upon a person or people rather than God's mercy? Think about that. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 says this. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. Here it is. Who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Old Testament scholar Douglas Stewart writes this. The wrongness of Jonah's attitude, and by implication the wrongness of any similar attitude, is indeed the most important lesson of this book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The second song of Isaiah, Canticle 10, is found on page 86 of the prayer book. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Mechanical 13, a song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. 
on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Mechanical 18, a song to the Lamb. It's at the bottom of page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. And then the song of the redeemed, it's the next canticle, 19. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Suffragist B, page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people, the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may when night comes rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, to the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you. And then use us, we pray, as you desire, and always for your glory and for the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. chapel prayer list. We pray for Voorhees College. We also pray for the Church of South India. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you all who have died that their deaths may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. And we pray for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. From our chapel prayer list, we lift up Retta Miller, Marcine Thompson, Chubby Rice, Wayne Corley, Nancy Malding, Lindsay Presley, Eve Daniel, Harriet Strait, Marilyn Sirigatis, Margaret Payne, Bob Melanup, Bob and Lois Rimbo, Reggie and Sarah Freeman, Eddie Pender, Dawson Scrivener, Martha Helen King, Ann Harris, Andrew Kramerchik, Safety for the Staff of Still Hopes, Protection for the People of Ukraine, and peace and healing in the Middle East. We pray for those serving in the military, especially Brian Dugan, Edward and Katie Cloyd, Thomas Smith, Alexander, Isaac, Natalie, and Gavin White. And we celebrate the birthdays this week of Nelson Lacey, Joyce McDonald, Elizabeth Allison, and Jim Martin. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. The General Thanksgiving, page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.